Hey guys, Luke here and welcome to my brand new series for Rugby League Live 3. It's going to be a New Zealand Warriors crew mode. Now, how did I decide on the New Zealand Warriors? Let's take a look. Now, if you're a long-time viewer of the channel, you would know that I did a West Tigers crew mode. Now, the last thing I did with the West Tigers was win the Premiership over the Bulldogs 30-12. Now, after I'd won the Premiership, I decided that I kind of did everything there was. I'd won the minor Premiership, I'd won the Nines, and I'd won the actual Premiership itself over three seasons. And that leaves us with the fourth season. I decided I didn't want to start again. I didn't want to start from scratch in season 2015 or 2016. I decided I want to continue on, and I did a straw poll saying which team should I use next, and I actually did a video on it. And the options that I gave you were the Parramatta Eels, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, the New Zealand Warriors, Newcastle Knights, and the Penrith Panthers. Now, it was a very, very close battle. Parramatta Eels and the New Zealand Warriors were the favourites, and the Warriors won by two votes. So that's how I ended up at the New Zealand Warriors. If you look at their positioning, they didn't make the eight, and just that's just not good enough for the Warriors. They should be up there winning a premiership, and I'm pretty certain they haven't won a premiership in the time that I've played through in this uh, this career mode. Now I've got the explanation out of the way, let's take a look at the squad that the Warriors have in this season and it kind of makes you think how they were going so bad. I know a lot of, you know, Rugby Live 3 is a little bit weird in terms of all the teams seem to have really, really good players and yet still go so bad. But the Warriors, you know, they got Johnson, Moylan's at the club, Vardavai is still really good. They got Wallace, Manor and Townsend, Harold McInnes, Williams, Henry, Carter, Fisiyahi, Peru, Rapira, Futatua, Ikahifo, Mossi Masoi, Palavi, Lasoni, Jake Marketo, Logan Tompkins, that's the brother of Sam, I believe. Sam no longer at the club, obviously. Uh, we've got this Simon dude, uh, Peter Barner, and, you know, Cody Walker's another one. I've noticed Charlie Gubb still at the club. He's sort of getting into um, some of the, like, I suppose, regenerator players or players who aren't particularly that good to start off with and have progressed well. But uh, yeah, the main players, obviously, Sean Johnson, Matt Boylan at the club at fullback. He's a really, really um, good player on the game. I'm very well aware of how good he is. And, uh, you know, Vatavai is a good player, Mentoring. One thing I notice is they're strong in the backs, not so strong in the forwards. So that could be a reason why they haven't done too well. Now we're going to move on to take a look at the Auckland Knights. I'm going to go through the group stages in this episode. And if we do make it to the finals, uh, which we probably will, probably will make it through the finals. I'm pretty good at the Nines. It's pretty hard to not win the Nines, to be totally honest with you. But uh, yeah, we're just going to go through the group stages this episode and looking at the team lineup, we're going for our strongest possible lineup. We want to win in front of the home fans and it is a little bit weird how the Warriors, even on this game, I don't think have won um, the Nines. So yeah, I, I, the Warriors, they're kind of like the, you know, most perfect, they're like they're perfectly suited for the, the nines yet they, they can't win and um, I'm going to do brief little highlights as you can see we're already into the second half only the one highlight to start off with now there were a few line breaks but no tries being scored and I should say we were playing three minute halves on the hardest difficulty and the actual difficulty like name has sort of escaped my um, you know escaped my mind at the moment I can't really think of it but I can assure you, definitely the hardest difficulty. And you will find with this Warriors crew mode that I did kind of screw up um, with the, you know, times. Because I haven't played Rugby League Live 3 for a long time. And I kind of figured I'll just go in and just crush it. But that definitely did not happen. As you can see here, it's taken a late try to Conrad Hull to put us in the lead with a few minutes to go. Sean Johnson wearing the number five. He kicks the goal. And I also should uh, mention that you know, with the Auckland Nines, the numbers are all weird. Like, positions are all weird. Um, they always assign... Uh, I think it's like four and five like as the halves and it should be six and seven like even in the actual game because you find them they'll just be on the wing but we'll hop away. he scores the last play of the game like literally the last play of the game well, well now it's going to be extra time as Hawkinson um, kicks the goal but the last play of regular time I should say we'll hop away. just palms off and pushes off a few players. I couldn't believe it. He just goes through and scores. I knew Hopper Whitey was a really, really good player on the game. He's actually a winger on the game before the update because all these players are done before the update because obviously I started this right when Rugby League Live 3 came out, but the patches come out, fan hub updates have happened, that sort of stuff. So lots of players have um, you know changed additions and overalls and that sort of stuff. Now, we got off to a terrible start in extra time. I think it was, I don't even know who did it. They kicked the ball. It was a great kick. We took it out. But for some reason, the computer did not even set up for a field goal or nothing. They just went for a try like normal. And we, you know, capitalized on this big time. We got the ball. We won a few penalties. And uh, we nearly scored, like, initially with Chad Townsend. But then we did end up scoring a pretty easy try. It was McInnes, who scored the match winner. Townsend got man of the match in that game. But we did get a win first start, which was pretty nice. Needed to get the win. I was actually surprised by how much I struggled in the nines, considering um, before I played, you know, when I was playing normally, I would just crush the nines if we didn't win. It was because I wasn't taking it serious. But uh, yeah, I was definitely taking this serious and I definitely was not playing well. But we move on to a game against Parramatta Eels. They came second. So this quite well, well, we would have been playing this game anyways if we had um, picked the Eels. But um, you can see the Eels side actually wasn't too bad. I don't know why they're going so bad. 
um, as well. I mean, Luke Kelly in the side, but he actually rated pretty good in the game. You can see they actually take the lead. Seven minutes in there, Semi Rodriguez scores after they had a repeat set from, from a kick. It's one of those ones where it's like, you just want the ball to go over, and you just... I couldn't remember like the button to not pick it up, and also I didn't want to take the risk because uh, I figured that they would have just dived on the ball anyways. I've made that mistake before in rugby league life three, trying to leave the ball, and they just dive on the ball like you'd think it'd go over the dead ball line, but it doesn't, and they definitely get the ball down there. Right there, I thought we we're just going to be able to um, keep running. We just like just, just ran straight past them, and I thought we we're going to go and um, score a try, but we didn't do that. I should have realized that it's a forward, and that's not going to happen. But Red Rodrigo, he like pushed off one, and then he kicked the ball for some reason. I don't know why, but Moreland picks up the ball, and he's going to race away and score straight from the kick return now Moylan I've found he's like not the fastest not the most like strongest he's pretty much like his real life um, counterpart he's uh, he's pretty good but um, after playing with Tedesco I definitely prefer Tedesco to uh, to Moylan on the game but Moylan is still a very good player and you saw there uh, he's quite fast and give him some open space and we will score a try now and um, you see Wolfman gets the ball here gets it to Townsend we've actually like we've got the lead I'm throwing the ball around just because I want to score a try and it nearly like turns into a total disaster here as a Vey Tau Tai or whatever you pronounce his name he ended up getting the ball after we threw it to the ground like I don't know why the Wolfman didn't get locked onto it and pick up the ball but anyways you know we did get away with that one a little bit a 7-6 win it was the, uh, the bonus point that got us, or well, the bonus try, I should say, that got us the win there. Now, moving on to the last game, we're pretty much all but guaranteed to go through to the finals. I don't think the other teams have had too much, uh, you know, high-scoring games or anything, just because it's only been three and a half. So, usually, whatever the score lines are in these games are usually pretty similar in the other games. But Connor and Hurrell gets off to a pretty nice start there. Just, I think it was, like, one of the first sets we had with the ball, just from dummy half. Connor and Hurrell literally, like, powers his way over, and he said to that guy, get the fuck out of my way. You aren't stopping me. And it's very, very similar to the real life Conor and Harrell, um, except on this game he can actually defend, and you know I can I can make the decisions for him. But another big bastard here in uh, Salomon Carter gets the ball and he gets it to McInnes. This is right on half time as well, and we start throwing the ball around. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have just kept running with McInnes. We actually like wrong footed the the fullback, but unfortunately I didn't realize at the time, and that happens a few times in the nines and just in rugby league life three in general, where I should just run the ball. I decide to pass it, and it's something that before I'd stopped making videos and playing the game regularly I got out of my system but now I've just got to um like it's back in my system I've got to get rid of it again but Townsend he scores a try and that is pretty much the sealer right there Townsend just got on the outside of his defender and it was just a really really nice try and you can see there I still haven't got up to scratch with the goal kicking part of the part of the game in terms of like passing the ball and that sort of stuff I can I'm passable goal kicking not so much we did get away with it this time because Johnson's a pretty good kicker but yeah we did get the win and in the next episode we'll be playing the first finals game against the Cowboys and this is where the episode is going to end hopefully you did enjoy it it's the first episode so uh, if you did enjoy it make sure you leave a like let me know um, how you're feeling about the series uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here you can follow me on twitter at MrLukeMyT thanks for the page description below and I'll see you on the next episode bye guys <laughs>